Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so the Kia blew up. Uh, <laughs> you know, I guess I uh, I have a habit of doing that to my vehicles. Um, but hold on, hold on. Kill it. But regardless, you know, I had called Kia, you know, and asked them like, hey, what do I do? You know, this is what the car is doing. And they actually turned around and told me, you know, hey, we're going to send a truck to you. Why don't you bring it in and uh, and we'll look at it? And I'm like, OK, that's a little odd, but sure, I'll send you the car. So I had sent them the car and uh, a couple days go by and they give me a call and they're like, hey, we ran, we have to run a test in the morning. But if the test fails, we got you covered. Come in for your rental car. So I'm like, OK. So I go and wait, you know, and kind of go and sleep the night and the next morning get the call and sure enough, they're like, hey, you're good. The test failed. We're going to get you a new engine. So I asked the guy, I'm like, what the hell did you test for? Right? Like what, what happened? And, and apparently there's one of two issues with, with uh, the Kia engines, the 2.0s and the 2.4s from like 2015 to 2019 or so. Um, it's either the piston rings some of them weren't sized properly and the engines have an oil consumption problem. Once it burns through enough oil, uh, it takes out the lower end, the, the rod bearings and the main bearings and all sorts of stuff, which is what happened. Um, or they say another issue is during the machining of the engine in the, like the original machining, like from the factory, um, there was some metal still in the engines that gets pushed back through the oil galleries or oil galleys and stuff like that. And, uh, and uh, they end up getting clogged on the rear most, I guess, uh, or not well, rear being like probably, I believe, the right side of the engine uh, bearings in the back, collect all the metal, eats up the bearing, eventually it throws the bearing and causes the same issue. Uh, either way, whichever happened, my car had failed the test, so they replaced everything, you know, brand new engine. So, car's back. I plan to be going to car shows and making videos on that. I hopefully plan to be starting the stereo in that car very, very soon. A uh, bunch of videos to come on that. Uh, but essentially, what I want to talk about this video is I design boxes and, you know, build stereos. And I'll put some pictures in of some of the work I've done, you know, just uh, just for reference. And if you have seen on the on the channel uh, a long time ago, I had posted my, uh, my S10. And that had two 12s, you know, that was a whole thing. I had done a couple videos with that, talking about that. Um, but here's uh, here's some pictures of some work I've actually done in some other cars that uh, there were some buddies and some other stuff that were just kind of like some customers and people that wanted me to do their work. So with that being said, you know, I do have a good bit of experience kind of with designing and building stuff like that. So with that comes, you know, some people that are a little bit less experienced, you know, that would like to know, you know, like that questions or they, they, some people, some people know and they, they have something that didn't quite go the way they thought it would. And they say, hey, hey man, you know, I have this hooked up this way and I thought it would work, but it's just not turning on or, you know, I turn it up and it's starting to die out or it shuts off. What's going on? You know, I, I and I'll, I'll help you out if I can, you know, and, and uh, I love to help people in the same kind of industry. You know, it's my passion. I love to see people enjoying it. And if I can make your experience better, or at least help you out and get you on your way or you know answer some questions and help you get your stuff sorted absolutely I'm here for you I love it um, and with that being said you know through doing this um, I get a good bit of questions every now and then from from some people you know that pop up um, and you know one of the main questions I get is well what's your favorite brand you know and and a lot of people have different opinions on this you know there's not really a wrong answer I mean there there are definitely cheaper brands and there are definitely some of the nicer brands and then there's some of those that are kind of up on a top tier because they do their own their own stuff like they do other stuff in house it's their own their own circuitry their people designed it themselves you know for instance that's why i personally am a huge huge fan of rockford fosgate i've used them for in, at least in every stereo i've i've used personally for myself and i've had four different cars and I think three of them had full stereos in them all of which were at least Rockford amps and my last Colorado which was the videos on the last couple uh, on the channel were about my my competition truck I was building that was a no wall and that was two Rockford 15s on a Rockford 1500 and 
now if the truck's gone, I had sold it, you know, the key is here, uh, which I'd mentioned in the beginning how that went. Um, but, you know, um, people ask, you know, well, there's cheap and there's, and there's expensive, you know, what's the difference? Is one better than the other? You know, truly, if you can go to Best Buy and you go and say whatever, you can get, you know, a $150 sub, a 12, and, you know, and it's going 500 watts, you know, and it beats for, for years and you love it, perfect. You know, but there's also someone like me who's going to go out there and try to turn that thing up as far as it can go, being a cheap speaker, and it will break eventually. You know, if you run a, something of cheap quality at its max, it will give out. You know, and I've had to explain this to people, and that's why, you know, my first truck was the color, uh, not the color, the S10 that was in uh, the first couple of videos. It was, uh, there's a video that I have, it's uh, like judging the C5 door speakers. Um, it did like an Usher door speaker challenge in that video. Got a lot of views on it, actually, but that, those 12s, uh, those were in that truck for four years, and those are 12 W7, or W6s from JL. Um, they were in that truck for three and a half, four years, I had sold them to a buddy of mine about three years ago, and he had sent me a Snapchat the other day and saying how he's impressed that they're still going. And keep in mind, these are two 12s on a thousand watts, and it floats his sunroof a little bit. It moves it, right, in, the, in this Nissan Maxima. And this is after seven years, give, given these subs are $700 a piece, if not maybe more now, but they stand up to the test of time and take the abuse. That's one thing that I can say for Sundown. I've seen from them, they seem to they seem to take a beating, you know, and they seem to put out very well. But I haven't used them personally. I've used them in a couple builds, um, and they perform extraordinary well from what I've seen. Uh, so, like I said, everyone has their own cup of tea, and you know, for me, I like Rockford. I trust them a little bit more with them being proprietary and kind of all in home. Um, with that being said. A company coming around I'm sure if you're watching this video he's a lot bigger than I am in this industry so if you see me you know who he is uh, down for sound his amps they look like they are the next tier. they they may not be the you know the one-off you know you know hand designed you know off, like off built on my own but they are definitely some top tier stuff from what I've been seeing so like I nowadays it's almost there's almost no wrong answer to that question it's all a personal preference you know even more so when you get to door speakers and stuff along that kind of vibe because when you when it comes down to your personal ability and your your ability to hear the difference that's what really matters if i see you in a car and i tell you this is a fifteen hundred dollar subwoofer and these are three thousand dollars worth of door speakers and the guy next to me has a five hundred dollar setup front front and back and you can't hear a difference then so be it. You know, that's cool. You know, and that's that's the that's the beauty of this is there's no right answer for this. You know? So that that's that's kinda that's kinda my answer for that. So another question I get probably just as much as the first one is uh is what's the best type of enclosure to build? You know, people want to build it for themselves or they ask me to build it for them and they're like, hey, what's the best box to build? You know, well, there's really no right or wrong answer to that question either. Um, truthfully, every box has its benefit and has its drawbacks, every style. Uh, so to start, we can talk about a sealed box. That's a small box, so benefits of being small. Um, but you don't get a ton of output from the speaker because of the way it's designed. You have a small airspace that's enclosed. The air can't go anywhere. And a sub. And the sub pushes out and then pushes back against this airspace. So it just compresses this air a little bit. And builds pressure so the speaker has a ton of suspension behind it because of the air being held right so it doesn't take a lot to move it it's very balanced so it makes it very musical um, but um, with that being said when the speaker um, is moving you only have the output of the front side of the speaker that's moving out into the cabin or like your car like the airspace you don't get the benefit of compressing the air back here even though the speaker is already doing it so what you can do there is you can step up to a ported box, whether you port it with an aero port, which is normally like PVC or like a tube, um, or if you do like a slant port or like a slot port, that's normally like uh, like wood built into the box. Uh, what that does is that whatever frequency you tune it at, uh, that releases an air the air in the box with that pressure at that certain velocity that it's tuned at. So not only do you have the sound wave coming from the speaker when you move out, 
but you also have the sound wave coming from the port when the speaker moves back, coming out of the port, benefiting, going into the car, benefiting, you know, the SBL and the overall, like, decibel loudness of the vehicle and of the stereo. Um, so with that, you do still have a lot of musical qualities with a port if you do it right and have the right port speed. If you have your port speed too fast or the mock speed too fast, you can get a lot of port noise and a lot of whistling and a lot of, it just doesn't sound good. Um, and if your port is too slow, you can almost get box harmonics. So you want to be very careful just to get it in the right tuning if you do want to do that. Um, you take a step farther, you can get to a bandpass box. And what a bandpass box is, is that's a sealed box, well, a fourth order bandpass for starters. Uh, that would be a sealed enclosure on, the, say, the bottom and the sub mounted in it, right? Um, but in front of the sub would be another box that is directly, like, on top of where it is. Two boxes put together, you know, but this one's ported. And that would be ported at, say, you know, 50 hertz or whatever. Um, so you would have the resonance of where the speaker plays in a sealed box and the higher end porting to allow a little bit more headroom, a little bit louder output from the system, uh, but still have some of that suspension control in the speaker, some more of that music quality. You know, and to me, these are the these are the band passes that really sound the best. Um, you go beyond that, you get to a sixth order. Um, and what that is, is you take that sealed enclosure that was on the bottom for say, and you port it. So now say it's, it's tuned at like 28 Hertz and you have the ported section, say, still at 50 hertz, right? So now you have two tunes. So now you have a low end and a high end. But what that does is that on the on a graph where show you, say if you look at a graph where it shows the, the frequency range, right? From like, say, 200 hertz down to like 10. You'll see the graph come in and peak at the one hertz that is at the high tuning frequency. It'll dip down and then peak again at the second. And at both peaks, it's very boomy. And in between, it's very hollow. And that's coming from me. I'm an, I'm an audiophile by, I mean, my own classification of that. I mean, that can be judged and taken however you guys want. Um, but that's just my opinion on it. So for me, to answer the question, I guess, for what my recommendation would be, if I had to tell someone what my favorite box to give them would be, would probably be a... A box that is properly sized, not oversized, um, but is a little lower than the recommended tuning, um, and have it be a slot ported box. That would be my best bet. I've built all of these across the board, and for musical versus output versus overall enjoyment of the system, uh, it just it seems like a ported box that had a good tuning frequency and good port velocity that was built correctly seems to be the best for kind of across the board. Uh, so with that, you know, again, the only reason for these video, this video was to try and put my advice out there, you know, if anyone is needing it or, or looking for it, just to kind of help give a second, second word of advice, take it or don't. But I appreciate you if you watched to this point in the video. If you would, please, I'm just starting and trying to get this going. If you would subscribe and like the video, I would really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one.